Hi. In this video, we'll be discussing the differences between objects and primitives. You may notice the voice in this video is different from the other videos, and that's because this video is a guest lecture. My name is Calvin, and I'll be taking you through objects versus primitives. So, we've been using primitives and objects a lot in our Java programs, but we don't know too much about the differences between them. We know that with primitives, the type is written in lowercase, lowercase int, lowercase char, we also have lowercase boolean, lowercase double. And when we are initializing these variables, we can just write the literal value that we want to put in that variable. We can literally write zero or the character A. When it comes to objects, we actually have capital letters for the type. So we have capital string, capital person. And with the exception of string, we actually have to use this new keyword to make a new object. We are constructing a new object. The reason we don't need it with string is because Java puts it in behind the scenes. So that's one difference. Um, we also know that primitives are really the basic data types. They are the kind of building block of data types in Java. There's, they're not made up of other data types and they can't be broken down any further. Compare this to objects, we see that objects are actually made up of other data types. A person, for example, might have the following attributes. It might have a string name, might have an int age, might have another person as its best friend. So it really has all these other data types inside of it that make it up. Um, primitives are basic data. It's inherent to Java. It's built into the language, whereas every object is actually an instance of a class. Every object you use has a Java class written for it somewhere. And this class defines the state and behavior of the object. These objects have attributes. They have methods we can call on them. Primitives don't have any of these things. So really, we can think of primitives as the atoms of data types. They're the smallest building blocks of data types, whereas objects are the molecules. They're built up of other, of other data types. So those are some high-level differences between primitives and objects. But the real difference comes in behind the scenes in how these variables are stored in memory. So with primitives, if we have the line int x equals 30, in memory, there actually is the value 30 stored inside that variable x. It's very straightforward and simple compare this with objects. So with objects, if I have the line rectangle rect equals new rectangle that has a width of 10 and a height of 2, I don't actually have that rectangle object stored inside that variable. Instead, what I have inside the variable is a memory address. And that memory address corresponds to a place in memory where the actual rectangle is stored. So we can really think of it as a pointer the variable rect points to a location in memory that actually holds the rectangle. Now this might be kind of weird to wrap your head around, but really try to understand this because this is the basis for the rest of this video is that objects are really just pointers. They are references to locations in memory. So with object storage in memory, the variable does not hold the object. The variable simply stores a location or a reference to where the actual object data is located. Here we see that the variable points to the object data. So what does this mean when we're using objects and primitives? Well, one difference comes in when we're comparing them. With primitives, we can use double equals to compare. If I have an int x that's 25 and an int y that holds 25, then I can use x double equals y. That will return true. These variables hold the same value. With objects, double equals will actually compare the pointers that are held inside of the object variables rather than the actual object data. This is why we need to use dot equals when we're comparing objects. For example, if we had two strings, one and two, and we initialize them to each point to new strings, hello, then we see that one and two both point to the value hello, but they point to different locations. When we do this, one double equals two will return false because they don't have the same pointer. They point to different locations in memory. However, if we use one dot equals two, this will actually go into that memory and check to make sure that the two strings are equal character by character. So one dot equals two will return true. Now there is a special case to note with strings that if we initialize them in this way, if we say one is equal to hello and two is equal to hello, and we use the string literal value rather than saying new string, then Java will actually save space in memory and not allocate two different locations for the same string. It'll have one and two both point to the same location. So in this case, one double equals two will end up being true because they are both pointing to the same location. But we should always use dot equals just to be safe. Another big difference comes in when we're passing primitives and objects as parameters to methods. So passing a primitive as a parameter copies over that data into the parameter variable. 
For example, in this program, I have an int x and it is equal to five. So here I have my x variable and it holds five. Now I'm gonna call this method add one and pass x. And this will copy over that five into a new variable called y. And this y is the parameter to the function. So now both x and y hold the value five. Inside the method, we will add one to y. This will change the y to a six. Then as soon as the method's over, y will go away and we'll print out x and we still get five. We see that x is unchanged by this method, add one. Now let's compare this to objects. If we pass an object as a parameter, this passes the pointer rather than the actual object data. We're passing a reference to an actual location in memory. So here, inside run, I've made a new rectangle called run rect. And it has a width of five and a height of 10. So on this first line, we're creating a new rectangle object with five height 10 and run rect is pointing to that location in memory. Now when we call change height and pass run rect, the actual pointer inside of run rect will be copied over into the parameter rect. So now both of these variables are pointing to the same location in memory. Now inside the method, when I say rect.setHeight12, this will actually modify the memory that both of these variables are pointing to. So as soon as the method is over, I'm left with run rect that's been changed. Even though I called a method on rect, since they were pointing to the same location, run rect actually was changed. Run rect's height was changed by the method call. So be very careful with this. Method calls that change a parameter will also change the original object at the call site. This is something you've got to be careful with. There are times when we may want a method to update the original object. However, we can avoid this by making a copy of the reference object when we initialize the instance variable. Doing so will allow us to update the instance variable without modifying the original object. Now what if instead of calling a method on that parameter rect, we set it to point to a brand new location? What would happen to run rect in this case? Well, let's see. Again, inside run, we've made a new rectangle and run rect is pointing to this new rectangle with width five and height 10. We call the method, copy over the pointer into rect, so now both of them are pointing to the same location. And on this first line, rect will point to a new rectangle with width five and height 12. So is this going to change run rect? Well, no, it won't. We make a brand new rectangle with width five and height 12 and rect no longer points to the same rectangle that run rect points to. Rect points to a brand new spot. And as soon as the method ends, rect goes away and we see that run rect is left unchanged by the change height method. So if we have a method call on an object that's a parameter, that will actually modify the original object. If we set it to point to a new location, the original object will be left unchanged. One last thing to be aware of is the null pointer exception. So like we've been talking about, object variables are actually just pointers to locations in memory. Well, what if we haven't initialized that variable yet? If the variable has yet to be initialized, then it doesn't point to any memory. It is a null pointer. And we are not allowed to call any methods on a null pointer because it doesn't point to an actual object. So let's look at this class. This is a student class, has a private string name as an instance variable, and inside the constructor, we are getting the first character of the name and storing that as the student's initial. So if we were to call new student and pass it the string Fred, we want to make a new student with the name Fred. What's going to end up happening is the parameter, the name, will be pointing to a string in memory with the value Fred. However, name has yet to be initialized. Name has not been set to equal anything. So name is a null pointer right now. So when we go to call char at on the null pointer name, we're going to get a null pointer exception. We're not allowed to call a method on a null pointer. So to fix this, we'll first set name to the name. This will set name to be pointing to the same memory location. Name is now pointing to Fred. And when we call try at zero, we'll actually get that F that's stored at the first character. So these are the differences behind the scenes between objects and primitives, how they're stored, and really that objects really just store pointers to locations in memory. Let's see what this looks like in the editor. So here we have a program that compares two rectangles to illustrate the difference between comparing primitives and comparing objects. We see that we can compare primitives using double equals. If we have an int x that holds five and an int y that holds five, then x double equals y should be true. We'll see that x is equal to y. However, if we use double equals comparing objects, that will actually compare the pointers that one and two hold inside of them. It won't actually compare the rectangles in memory. It won't compare the rectangle data. So if this is true, that just means that one and two point to the same memory location. 
we can compare objects using dot equals as long as the dot equals method has actually been implemented for this class. If the dot equals has not been implemented yet, it has the exact same behavior as double equals. It will simply compare the pointers inside of one and two. And so we have not yet implemented the equals method for the rectangle class. So let's see what happens if we run this. Okay, we see that five is equal to five, the primitives were equal to each other, but neither of these printed. That means one and two are not pointing to the same location in memory. What's cool is that if we, instead of making a new rectangle for two, set it to point to the exact same one that one is pointing to, and rerun this, we'll actually see that both double equals and dot equals show that they are equal. They point to the same location in memory. But we want to actually have a dot equals that compares two rectangles regardless if, if they're pointing to the same memory. We want to actually compare the rectangle data. So let's go to the rectangle class and define a dot equals method. Public, it's going to return a boolean equals, and we want to check if this rectangle is equal to a different rectangle, other. So this rectangle is equal to a different rectangle if the width of this rectangle is equal to the width of the other rectangle, and the height of this rectangle is equal to the height of the other rectangle. Notice we can use double equals for these because they're primitives. We're comparing ints, and we want to return that. All right, let's check that and see if that works. Great, so we see that the primitives are equal and the objects are equal. This one did not print because they are not pointing to the same memory location. Here we have a program that tests out the methods of the dog class. So a dog simply has a string breed and a string name, and we can get and set the breed and name. So inside changing dogs, we're gonna make an original dog that is a golden retriever named Sammy. And we'll see that by setting other dog variables equal to this original dog, changing these variables will actually have effects on the original dog. For example, on this line, we're setting this new dog equal to original dog. So now new dog and original dog point to the exact same memory. If I write something like new dog dot set name Tracy, that will not only set the name for new dog, it will set the name for original dog because they both point to the exact same memory. Down here, if we call change breed on original dog and pass it as a parameter, we see down here that parameter dog and original dog will point to the exact same location in memory. So when we call parameter dog dot set breed great dane, this will actually set the breed for the original dog as well. So both of these cases, setting a local variable to point to the dog, or setting a parameter to point to the original dog, and changing them, calling a method on them, will actually change the original. Then we have one more method, no change. We were taking test dog, pass it into no change. And what happens inside no change is that the parameter actually gets pointed to a brand new memory location. Parameter dog originally points to test dog, which is passed in, but then it will be pointed to a new dog. So setting the breed on parameter dog will not actually affect the test dog. Let's check that. All right, so our original dog is Sammy, who is a golden retriever. Our new dog is Tracy, and the original dog's name has been changed to Tracy. So you changed my dog. Then down here, we see that parameter dog, changing to Great Dane, actually changed the original dog too. So we changed our dog again. But when we look here, test dog was not changed because this parameter was set to point to a new location. The original dog was left unchanged.